What's up you guys? Welcome back to Naturally Zandra. Today's video is gonna be my natural hair unpopular opinions. I wrote some notes, so you already know, you know, this is about to be super thorough. My opinion on some of these is amazing to see. Like when I'm writing them, I'm like, it's not a lot that I have compared to like the regular natural hair community, but a lot of mines come from like stuff that haven't worked for me. So don't take this personal, you guys. If it works for you, this is kind of like just to, you know, go with the trends of unpopular opinions and things that don't work for me because it's important for people to know that those things that are commercialized or those things that seem like they work well may not work well for every person that's natural. And without further ado, let's get into my natural hair unpopular opinions. I have seven unpopular opinions. I wrote general notes. But the first one, you guys, is going to be that baby hairs are not a necessity. Yes, I said it. I see so many women on Instagram, YouTube, all of that, and they slay their edges to the gods. And that's a talent. That's a talent to do that because everybody ain't got the patience for that. I have a little swoop -de whoop right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have a small swoop -de whoop <laughs> I have a, some one, literally one on the side that I do. I don't do a whole fiasco because number one, I don't like gels, which I'll get to the next unpopular opinion that I'm gonna list. But I do not like to slay my edges. I think it looks, it looks good on the right person, but I think depending on the style, it's harder to achieve. If you're doing like a puff or something, that's when it's easier to do edges. But if you're doing something like this, a blowout, it's not easy to do without you messing up the other texture. And I don't want to mess up my other texture because it looks so good. So yeah, that's my first unpopular opinion. I think that's one of the top ones out of this list of girls doing edges. My next unpopular opinion is going to be that gel is not where it's at. I said it. I said it. Gel is not where it's at, you guys. Gel is not where it's at. When you put on gel, whether that's eco style or whatever, what happens? 98% of the time, it causes flakes, it causes white residue, it causes your edges to be dry, it causes a lot of problems, and I don't like it. So I stay far away from gels. The only gel that I will try is stuff that's like a jelly. Now I know I may get some, some comments. They're like, girl, wash and goes are the truth. Now if you look at these, Women that do it, they mostly have regular regular hair strands, not fine like me. They normally have looser curl texture like 4A. And not to mention, they normally have been doing it for years. Firstly, I don't got time to be trying out no different combos for years. I'ma try it once a year or twice a year. And if it don't work, I don't wanna do it. I just don't wanna do it. It takes extremely long to be disappointed. You have to find the right products that match together because you know different seasons change up. So right now it's getting hotter, so it may be better for me doing wash and goes than me doing it in the winter. When I did it in the winter, I caused, I had a bunch of flakes. Let's try it two times. Flakes on flakes on flakes on flakes. Yeah, wash and goes are not worth it to me. Not right now, it's not worth it. The fourth one is going to be that people always say, don't use silicones in your shampoo. Don't use silicones in your leave-in. Don't use silicones in your conditioner. I don't care. I don't care if it's silicone in there. What I care about is if it works for my hair. Screw all the other stuff. The next one is gonna be that finger detangling is easier than using a comb or brush. Finger detangling is very prominent in the natural community. I think it's a little less prominent now because women are getting more tools that work better, like um, the Felicia Leatherwood brush and things like that, and the Demon brush, and some women just use tools. I've always used tools. I've tried out finger detangling, but my problem is it doesn't work for fine hair. Let's put it that way. Let's just, let's just put it out there. It don't work for fine hair. Finger detangling is kind of pointless because you can't get all the knots with just fingers. You cannot. And if your hair not fully detangled, for fully detangled, it's hard to prevent more tangles. Now, if you have thicker strands, you may not notice the difference. But when you have fine strands, 
you're gonna notice the difference. Don't give me no regular conditioner. Don't give me, don't tell me to shampoo and then give me a regular conditioner and then I follow up with a, condi a deep conditioner. Cut the conditioner out completely. Cut it off, cut it off. Conditioners are literally adding more time to your already long wash day. Conditioners aren't moisturizing enough. It's, it's not moisturizing enough to really justify you going to that step. So just cut the conditioner out completely. Just side it, side it. Just, just put lines of shampoo, deep conditioner, oils, things like that. Just take it out of the whole product lineups for any hair product. Just take it out. It's not even worth it. Now, as a pre-poo, yes. So mark it as a pre-poo. Don't mark it as no conditioner because it ain't conditioning nothing. It really ain't. Deep conditioner is where it's at. The last and final unpopular opinion. You don't need extra protein if you have fine hair or if you have hair that's like resistant to protein. I just used the protein treatment by Shea Moisture. My hair felt so amazing when I applied it. When I rinsed it out, my hair felt like a Brillo pad. I guarantee you not, it felt like a Brillo pad, you guys. When I was combing the ends, it, the ends were getting so stuck and I had to keep going over it and trying to detangle it, but it wasn't getting detangled because it was too much protein. And you see a revelation right now of people talking about moisture overload. Well, most of us never get moisture overload because to me, moisture overload don't exist. I've never went to sleep with a deep conditioner and my hair got moisture overload. I've never had it happen, but it could happen if you have looser hair texture. If you have a looser hair curl patterns, it's more sustainable to things like moisture overload. If you have 4C, 4B, the chances of you getting moisture overload is slim to none. It's really slim to none because we need as much moisture as possible. I can have my moisturizer in two days, my deep conditioner, and I don't get any moisture overload. You don't always need protein with your deep conditioner because you may turn out like how I did where I had a horrible, horrible detangling session due to the over moisturizing effects of that bomb, bomb, bomb protein. If you're new to this channel, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then, you know, I did my job. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.